everyone. Welcome to the Josh and Julianne Show. Just kidding, it's one and all kids. We're in week three of our epic series, learning about God's love for us and for the world. We get to see how showing God's love to others can really make a difference. Yeah, and one way that we do that is through memorizing his word. And our, memor our memory verse this month is 1 John 4.10, and it says, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That verse can help you remember that God loves you so, so, so much. So memorize it as best you can. Last week, we learned how God wants us to take care of one another. And this week, we're learning how God loves us no matter what happens in life. Let's go. What's up, everyone? We're here for another game. Um, I feel like I look kind of ridiculous, but honestly, I'm just glad to be here. I feel kind of ridiculous with you as well, but um, this seems interesting. There's like ketchup and Skippy, peanut butter, mustard, uh -huh. salt, all this stuff. Do, you, do we know what's happening right now? I, I don't know, but Yesenia, why don't you tell us <laughs> what's going on? Today, you are playing what we call hard-headed. Hard-head. Do I need a helmet? No. <laughs> really but what you do need to do is throw the ball across the table, hit every single oh, item down ah, within a, me. <laughs> I don't do this within 45 <laughs> seconds. So you have 45 seconds to hit every item down. You yeah. each get a turn. Whoever does it within the 45 seconds or before the 45 seconds <clears throat> clearly wins. So uh, I think we'll let ladies go first. And if you think Julianne's score was like the winning one, you vote for her and your leaders will take count. And if you don't, you wanna wait for me and then we'll see who the winner is at the end. Oh, oh so they get to wait to see how I go, how mm -hmm. I do, and then vote who mm -hmm. they think is gonna win. Yeah, basically So if like, I knock down all of them, they can they just can pick just you. They can just say, oh, Julianne's the winner. But then like, it would be like time. I think Yesenia's keeping time. So like, you oh, knock them all down, but it. I do it faster than you. Like, oh, her time took a little bit long. Got it. So let's do that. Sounds like a plan. All right, well, ladies first. Yeah, you go scared right. of it. I'm scared I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> you ready? Played softball for like, two years when I was like seven. So maybe that'll come back to me. All right, here we go. 45 seconds on the clock. On your marks. Get set. Go. Oh gosh. That's one. That's stuck. That's one. Two. Oh, Julianne. Oh, get it. That's what? Four. It's flying my face. Come on. Oh, the skippy is so hard. <laughs> You're at 20 seconds. Gosh. I was doing so good. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, one more. 30 seconds. One more. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah! Oh, 36 seconds on the clock. Perfect. 36 seconds. Wow. Josh, she was epic. Josh I'm just has to be. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so if you think that I'm gonna win this, uh, you can head on over to that side of the room. But if you think Josh is a good shot and he's gonna win this, you're gonna head on that side of the room. So do that now. We're gonna reset these things. Ready, go. Okay, we're back. Uh, Julian's gonna go that way. Yesenia's gonna count me down. Good luck. Here All right, go. here we go. 45 seconds on the clock. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> on your mark. Get set. Go. Oh, no, <gasps> no. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm blind. Oh. I'm blind. Oh. I'm blind. I'm blind. Oh, Josh, get, get him, get him! Ah, <laughs> no! Count me down, I can't, I need motivation! Ah, 38 seconds! Wow. No! Ah, oh. 41 seconds! Oh. 
So she won that, right? Yeah. No! <laughs> Good job. In your defense, though, your string is like half as long as mine. Yeah. Oh, well, you know. So. It's good all good. Good job. Good job, team. Okay, well, it's time to get our praise on. Whether we win or lose, we have the same Lord. So let's worship. Hey, friends, worship time is here. We get to sing about how great our God is. So get up on your feet and sing and dance with us as we praise Jesus with our first songs, Never Given Up and Just You.
Worship time is such a great time to focus on who God is and all that he does for us. We have one more song at the end of service, but now it's time for the message. So grab your Bible, grab a seat, and get ready to learn with us. I'm Pastor Yesenia, and we are here to learn about God's love and how we can show it to the world. This week, we're looking at just how much God's love covers us. His love is huge, and I don't think we quite realize just how big it is. Our bottom line this week is God loves us no matter what. No matter what. That's a big statement. In every major story, book, or movie, we always see the main character have a, a crisis where they're faced with a decision and they end up making the wrong one. This happens regularly in life too, doesn't it? You might think you know how you'd act in a certain situation, but when you get there, you might act in a completely different way. And sometimes we know how we're supposed to act, yet we do the exact opposite. Why is that? If we take a look at the Bible in Genesis 3, we can see some others who went through this crisis as well. In fact, they were the very first people to go through it. When God created Adam and Eve, he told them that they could eat anything, anything, anything in the garden, except the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in Genesis 3, we see them faced with the decision to disobey God. The serpent tries to talk to Eve into eating the fruit, but Eve responds in Genesis 3, 2 through 3, she says, The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Eve knows what's right. But the serpent is persistent and says in verse four and five, you will not certainly die. 
the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. (sighs) The serpent tricked Eve by telling her a twisted version of the truth. She and Adam both ate the fruit and disobeyed God. After they had eaten the fruit, they wanted to hide from God instead of walking with him. They knew that they had messed up and they were ashamed of their choice. Not only that, but Adam blamed Eve for the sin. The relationship between God and mankind had been broken, but so had the relationship between man and woman. This was a huge mistake. There would be big consequences from here on out for all of mankind. And one day they would eventually die. Because of their choice, death was now a part of the human story. But remember our bottom line, God loves us no matter what. I have a few friends who can tell us what this looks like in their lives. So let's hear from them. Hey everyone, I'm Julian and I love creating things. God is the best creator and he made us to be creators just like him. You might like to create amazing like Lego creations or create amazing things on your video games. Like I love Animal Crossing and I love creating cool islands on my Animal Crossing. Or you might love to create a new dance for your friends to dance to with your favorite song. But I think we are all creators because God created us to be creators just like him. This week, I'm kind of upset, I'm gonna be honest, because I was making this thing and it looks kind of crazy, but it was supposed to be a background for something and I ended up messing it up. And I was so sad because I had to do each of these dots individually. And so I was going and I was getting the pattern, just kidding, upside down. That's how crazy it is. I was going, I had this pattern, green, yellow, pink, green, yellow, pink. And then I'd kind of start and I'd offset it. It was yellow, pink, green, yellow, pink, green. And then I tried to offset it again. Pink, green, yellow, pink, green, yellow. And then I got to the very end. It was almost perfect. And then I said, I went back to the first one and said, green, yellow, pink. And then I really don't know what happened, guys. I think I was just distracted. Um, But these aren't even the same color and they don't line up with the pattern and it threw the rest of it off. See, now I have like lines of the same color. And it was supposed to be like all different colors. And I'm kind of upset about it. I made a mistake. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it actually connects with our bottom line from this week, which is that God loves us no matter what. And you know what? No matter what, I think this is still usable. I think I still like it. It still has like the kind of crazy dots in a couple different colors. You know, you might not have even noticed that I made the mistake unless I had literally just pointed it out to you. So I think I can actually still use this even though I made a mistake. And in the same way, God doesn't expect us to be absolutely perfect. He makes us to be beautiful things no matter what. Even if we kind of deviate from his plan a little bit in certain parts of our lives, he still says that he loves us no matter what. And I don't know if I'd say I love this, but I am gonna love what I'm gonna do with it later because it's just one part of a bigger project. But I love what this teaches us about God because God never puts this expectation on us that we have to be absolutely perfect in everything we do because he says, I love you no matter what. And in fact, he loved us so much that even when we messed up, he brought in Jesus. And Jesus lived the perfect life. Jesus took on all the pressure of being absolutely perfect. And he made a way for us to have a relationship with God, even if we kind of mess up sometimes. And so I think when I use this in my project going forward, I'm going to really make sure that I end up really using this part that I messed up on it because I want it to remind me that God loves us no matter what, even if we mess up, because Jesus lived the perfect life so that even if we mess up, It's okay, we can put our trust in him and he's gonna love us no matter what. See you next time, guys. Hi, one and all kids, my name is Leo and I'm going to tell you the story about when my family thought they lost me. I was in Hawaii with my family and there was a beach connected to the hotel we were at. I love the beach, but I wasn't allowed to go. 
by myself. A family member had to go with me. I was only seven, so I was a little one, but that didn't stop me from going to the beach. I saw my brother and my cousin leaving the beach, but I really wanted to go, but I decided to go on my own. I was there for about an hour all alone, enjoying the waves. When my mom noticed that I was gone and she started freaking out, checked every, she checked everywhere. They even called hotel police. They locked down the entire building, the entire hotel searching for me. She thought I was lost or something tragic had happened. They locked down the entire hotel searching for me. She thought I was lost or something tragic had happened. They looked everywhere. When they finally found me, I remember the look on my mom's face and the face of my family. It was a look you'll never forget. I thought for sure I'm in big trouble. I knew the rules and I broke them. My fun time at the beach all of a sudden became, oh no, what did I do? After my family screamed and hugged me at the same time, I knew I was in trouble, but felt that they still loved me. The next day, I was not allowed to go to the beach. I sat in the hotel with my mom and my siblings and felt so thankful that it wasn't worth worse than it was. I know that was all God. I know my family loves me like God does. And if I mess up, God still shows me that he forgives me, but ultimately he loves me no matter what. The entirety of the Bible tells the story of God's love, reaching across spaces that seem insurmountable. Isn't that incredible? The story of our creator pursuing us throughout time in order to bridge the gap between us and him. The plans keep failing because of our sins against God, but nothing will stop from his epic quest to see mankind restored so that we can walk with him once again. So he has the ultimate plan for every human to be able to be with him again, but it would take the biggest sacrifice. Enter Jesus Christ. God never stopped loving Adam and Eve when they messed up, and God never stopped loving us either. He eventually sent his son Jesus to be the ultimate sacrifice for all of the sins of the world. And through him, we can once again walk with God just like he wanted it to be in the beginning. God's love knows no bounds. He loves us no matter what. This week, how can you show that kind of love to those around you? What would it look like for you to show that kind of sacrificial love to everyone you come across? What would it look like to lay down your thoughts and your wants and your ideas and to show the love of Jesus to people? It would change the world. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us even when we don't deserve it. Thank you for the love that you display day in and day out from the day we were born. Thank you for teaching us in the Bible that no matter how many times David, David, Abram, Adam, and Eve messed up, you still pursued them and you will continue to pursue us regardless of the decisions that we make. But God, help us to be wise with our decisions. Help us to submit to your plans and to the, and to your leading. To, have the, to hear the Holy Spirit when he says go and to hear the Holy Spirit when he says stop. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us show your kind of love to the people around us and in our sphere of influence this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's love is huge. He chooses to love us and wants to be with us even when we mess up. We know that we all make mistakes all the time, but knowing that God still loves us and still wants to be with us and bless us makes me want to worship him that much more. Me too. And God is so much bigger than our mistakes. And he wants to make the, he wants us to make the best choices when we follow him. But his love remains the same even when we make mistakes. And I want to thank God for that. 
Same. One way that I can show Jesus how grateful I am is by giving my offering. When we give our offering money to God, we're telling God that we understand that He is the one who gives us all the things that we have in our lives. And by giving back our first and our very best, we are telling God that He is the number one thing in our lives, even if it costs us some of our money or even some of our time. You can talk to your parents and leaders about giving your offering today. Worshiping God is another way that we can show God how thankful we are for Him in our lives. Join us as we sing our song, All That I Need. Worshiping is so fun and I can't wait to do it again next week. Me too. Invite some friends with you as we learn more about God's love for us. But until then, we want to send you off into the week with one hope, one life in, in Christ. Christ. Bye everybody. Bye friends.